This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. What do you think of the 500 rupees and the 1000 rupees notes that are lying with you in your closet for all those Indians who are living abroad? Many of them have managed to make a trip to India, especially during December, and get their money exchanged, deposited, and get uh, the value back. But now with this demonetization rule, it's become a little inconvenient because a lot of them are wondering, should I make a trip to India just for the sake of exchanging 500 and 1000? And now that the deadline is over, NRIs can go to the RBI and also write in to them saying we want to exchange the cash. But then there are several nitty gritties to it. It's a little inconvenient, um, much as opposed to what an NRI would have expected. But my question are two. I have two questions for all of you joining us on this program. Jadeja Ji, my question is for a rich man like you, 500s, thousands, carrying them is something that all of us do. I have some 500s and thousands which I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know if I should go to India and exchange it. But then that's one rule, that what's, that's one question. The second question mark is, the RBI says that any person traveling out of India cannot carry Indian currency um, abroad, which means nobody is allowed to take since 2012 any money, which is Indian rupees, outside. And that's a rule which is not very effective on in-ground. Should this rule change? First and foremost, uh, it's not the rich or the poor, but it's a matter of concern. And uh, I think what the Prime Minister done for the, the demonetization for the 500,000 is a wonderful idea. Okay. Right. Having said that, you asked uh, you know, the second question. Is that the, is it the right rule for the government to, you know, the not to allow anybody? This is a completely wrong because I have traveled so many countries. Can you imagine if every country is like you can't take the any money away? Yes, you have to have a limit for it. And when I come back from India, I have a limited, you know, the, you know, the few thousand only, even not even 10,000. So why I take it? Because when I go back again, I don't want to wait in a queue at the ATM or I don't want to wait for the, someone to give me some money to give it to the, you know, the cab people or things like that. So these are the things or sometimes you wanted to have a, something to buy or give it to the, something to the porter. So these are the convenience money. It's not like a, you know, the money you are transporting there. Surely for, for reasons of convenience. Yeah. So you're suggesting that there can be a cap? Yes. But it should be allowed. It is a cap by the, you know, the within the rule rights. So, for example, I'm quite happy with it within a less than ten thousand pound per less person. That, that's or, or between the five and ten thousand because you never know. Otherwise, you lose currency by you know the giving back again. Because what has happened? And there are lots of people. I don't know whether they complain about it because when you exchange from the sterling to rupees, yeah. you you get charged for it. And when you you know exchange from the you know the rupees to sterling, then again you charge. Why do you do the, you know, the double charges? It can be done. For example, Tithi, what do you do? You're a poet? Uh, yeah, I'm a poet and now I have joined the hotel as a chef. Okay. A poet come chef who lives here in London by name Tithi has 500, uh, 5,000 rupees in cash, 500 and 1,000 rupees notes. And her question is, what can she do with that money now that the deadline is gone? The RBI says you need to have an, R an RO account. She will have to go in person. But then a flight ticket is not less than 40,000 rupees. Um, so it's, it's pretty complicated. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I completely agree. I mean, just for 5,000 rupees, you wouldn't be making that journey. I mean, I'm myself stuck here with maybe a couple of thousand rupees only. And um, I can't make that trip. But the cash is stuck. Uh, either it's useless, which is what, you know, going to happen or otherwise we should have some facility here locally in London or other different places in, uh, in, in abroad that in a way you can deposit and I completely agree I mean you know all the countries do allow you to carry whether it's pound US dollars or any other currency to a sizable limit so you know we should get that opportunity and if we get that I, I will really appreciate if RBI amend that rule and allow us to carry at least some amount. Which okay. okay, one more vote uh, for RBI to amend this rule that there should be some amount of uh, Indian rupees that should be allowed by people to carry outside of India. What are your thoughts? 
See, there are uh, two things over here. First thing you asked, like, you know, whether you're having money. I think it is, uh, like, you know, every person who's traveling out of India uh, and coming out, they will definitely have some money in hand. Yeah. And it is impossible for anyone to ha come out without money because, you know, you need money at the airport to spend and, you know, not everyone is have, uh, having card or as uh, my critic said that, you know, you incur charges in, G in Sterling to or all the conver conversions. And secondly, like, uh, on the second question, I think uh, RBI should amend this rule because, you know, it is um, kind of you have to have uh, some kind of uh, you know outlet over here where you have to deposit because most of the people over here are having like you know money between five thousand to ten thousand. So even if you take a you know lean season ticket, you have to spend around forty thousand for a return ticket. So five to five thousand to ten thousand going to forty thousand, I don't think so. This match is proper. So yeah. there has to be some outlet over here yeah. which has to accept it. Yeah. The math doesn't work. Have any of you managed to make trips to India otherwise? Uh, I have uh, made a trip uh, in December because I go there every winter. So uh, like I don't think so many people are fortunate to, to go around the same time. So you got it exchanged? Yes. Lucky I man. I haven't. I'm, yeah. I'm unfortunate one. Okay. Me neither. And you? You, uh, you said you have some cash. <laughs> yeah. with you. Do you still have some cash with you? Uh, well, I have some cash there. Unfortunately, I couldn't manage to go there because my, you know, the business commitment back here. Right? But I would like to actually, I don't know whether you are aware about it. On 8th of November, when the announcement came, I was the first one to write to the, you know, the Indian High Commission office here, saying that, look, sometimes you have a concern, but if you have a concern with a solution, uh, then people understand. 8th night, I wrote an email to the Deputy High Commissioner. I said, look, these are my, you know, the concern. Concern is that there are two options I gave it to them. Okay. One option was that, that the NRI should, you know, the request actually, Indian High Commissioner should request to RBI, I mean, request to Prime Minister to request the RBI to, you know, make an arrangement of the, you know, Indian, Indian bank, local bank here, they accept the currency, whatever is the legitimate amount of the, you know, the, the per person, then exchange with the sterling. That was a one solution. Other solution I suggest that either that or any NRI first time they're traveling within the next 12 months, they should exchange the you know the notes. So they should give them you know the more time there more because time. because a lot of people cannot afford to go yes. you know the in and out just for the sake of the money. Yes. So first journey with the passport to say, look, this is the first journey. We are here, it could be a two months, could be a six months, could be a 12 months. Then they exchange it to the, you know, the new currency. It's simple. It could be a one year. Yeah. Uh, everybody cannot afford this journey. It is uh, really expensive to travel. Commitments yeah. of yeah. not being able to travel. Yeah. There is some sense that we are getting from sources in the government that there could be an extension beyond the 30th of June, but we don't know yet. And perhaps better communication is all that the NRI asks for because overall I see most of them giving a thumbs up to the demonetization. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Bangalore, which is the venue for the biggest ever Pravasi Bharatiya Divas, which attracted more than 7,000 NRIs from all over the world, announced that 30th of June is going to be the deadline now for all NRIs holding PIO cards to convert it into OCI, which is Overseas Citizen of India. And I have with me quite a few of them. Sir, are you uh, an OCI card holder or are you yet to change it from PIO to OCI? I have OCI card. You have an OCI card. You. So do I. You do. OCI. 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 And you? Uh, I don't have, I, but uh, I think but my husband have should have. Okay. Yeah. And now are you on the Indian passport? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Okay, great. As an OCI card holder, you have the privilege of traveling to India without a visa. Yes. Any number of times you want to, mm. you can hold employment in India. And there are so many other factors to it and so many other advantages. Right. But you can't vote. Mm. That's right. In India. That's right. Would you like to change that? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Of course, of course we will. We will. We will. Okay. Like Overseas Indians should then. have. Yeah. Overseas Indians should have the right to vote, as we contribute to India, in materially, and uh, physically and spiritually. Spiritually as well. How young are you, sir? I am only 29 plus. <laughs> Only 29 plus, and that's why perhaps the youth now is very interested in Indian politics and wants to have a say 
in uh, who rules uh, the country, who governs the country. What is your reason for wanting to vote? Why is that thirst there even after so many years of migrating to the United Kingdom? Well, because we are Indians, uh, Indians at, at heart, uh, we always think about uh, India. Uh, we, uh, even though we've been living in this country, uh, in, uh, in England, for the last uh, 40, 50 years. 50 uh, years you've been here? Yes, I have been here. 51 years precisely. Okay. Uh, if, even then, I, I still think about India more than I think about Britain. It may sound very uh, silly or it, it may sound strange to you, but I still think uh, India, I, I think about India more than I think about Britain. It doesn't sound strange to me at all, not at all, because I've heard of this uh, several times. I feel that way and I hope to feel that way for the next several years. But then it doesn't feel strange at all and so many uh, people have the same feeling given it's something about India indeed. Would you like to vote? Yes, definitely. I would love to say and I'm feeling very proud that it looks like my dream is coming true. You know when there was election and believe me, God knows and my family members know, I was praying so hard for uh, Narendra Modi ji that he should win and even every time I see him on uh, TV, I pray for him for his long life, good health. But why do you want to vote in India? Because especially the only, I didn't want to vote it before, but since this election was there. Since this election. So yeah. there is something about the yeah, 2014 I to go. general election, Definitely. which really has got a lot Made of people do, yes. uh, very, very uh, enthusiastic about That's the 2014 right. election. But should there be also a change in the OCI card, which says a person who holds an OCI card cannot hold public office in India, cannot participate in Indian politics directly. Would you want to participate in the political system ever? Well, if I want to do, but I had to prepare ground for that. You can't just go in there. Yeah. You can't buy the politics. Yeah. So I live here. I don't live in India, but I pray for India. And I don't think I should be able to do that, what you think. NRIs or OCI, card holders should be able to allow or should be able to participate in the election process definitely and i would like to say one thing with pride that india theek hum yahan reh rahi hu main 40 saal se ye mera hai sasural par mera maika hamesha india hi hai aur india hi rahega narendra modi ji i'm really really praying for you for your good health and long life and uh, thank god you've been elected oh wow this is a big fan in, uh, we have a big fan in Mr. Narendra Modi here with me. Um, yes, so the chorus seems to be that people should be allowed to participate in the election yes. process. The argument, however, will be that, well, you have chosen a British passport, you're a citizen of another country, so you won't be allowed. So that debate perhaps will go on. But clearly what I have seen in um, across United Kingdom and across uh, several countries uh, where there are a sizable number of NRIs is that definitely most of them want to participate in the election process by as a voter and for that um, I think a big campaign is on where they would want to see that change as well for your friends who want to who still are to change from holding a PIO to OCI what's your message was it an easy process to change it to the OCI um, well to, uh, I, I never had any PIO uh, I, uh, I had I mean when OCI was declared uh, then I applied for the OCI. I, I never and was it straightforward, the process? Uh, yes, yes, it was. It was okay. Same, case with Same you. thing, I follow suit. Same thing with you. Somebody yeah, has just joined in, so I'm going to pull you in into the conversation. Do you hold a PIO or an OCI? That way. Nothing. We are just, we have applied and uh, it is under the process. How, how long has it been since you've applied? Are you happy uh, with the whole process? Because yes. why I want to talk about this is because the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, has said that 30th of June is now the new deadline for any NRI holding a PIO, which is Person of Indian Origin card, to make it into an OCI, which is Overseas Citizen of India. Yeah. Now, is the process easy? It, to us, yes. It yes, is yes, not too bad. Yes, no. Okay, great. So, no complaints of red tape or delay no, no, or no. lack of paperwork? and. Sometimes, you know, if we present wrong papers and it gets in delay. So, as long as you do the job of... Yeah. Uh, applying or making your application very foolproof then it's it's a straightforward process okay your husband may be having an OCI card um, your he's, he's about to apply for uh, PR so I'm right. going to tell him about all these things 
Yes, this is the latest uh, yeah. announcement, by the way, yeah. that 30th of June, and for any of our viewer who's watching this, 30th of June has now become the new, 30th of June 2017 is now the new deadline Definitely. for all NRIs holding a PIO card to convert it into an OCI because a PIO card will soon become invalid and the OCI is what will be valid and that gives you a lot of um, uh, strength and a lot of teeth indeed because you get to travel to India as and when you like, you don't need a visa, uh, you have the status of uh, holding any property in India and that will be taken care of just like how it is for mm. an Indian citizen and so on and so forth. However, there's still a debate on whether Indian citizens living abroad uh, or citizens of Indian origin living abroad can vote or not. Almost all of them here have raised their hand to be able to cast a vote. We'll wait and see whether that rule will change as well. Thank you, thank you. all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the young lady and all you young people.